Hey there, boaters. I'm Captain Stacey Hanrahan, and welcome to Monday's episode of Boaters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was provided by Bill Schneden. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Now in Green Marine, Southern Boating's Captain Rob Hanrahan is here with a look at the future of fuel. Hey, Captain Stacy. In this month's engine room, we have a story of a man who just wouldn't give up, Pete Bethune. This New Zealander's dream started on a sleepless night when an idea suddenly struck that eventually took him around the world in one of the most radical boats ever designed, called Earth Race. And just to keep things interesting and focused on his drive to reduce the carbon threat to the planet, Bethune did it with Cummins Mercruiser 100% biodiesel capable engines. The Earthrace Trimaran is a magnificent display of modern design. Its long, narrow hull and twin sponsons actually pierce through waves rather than ride on top of them. Those twin vertical horns are actually snorkels that gulp fresh air for the twin Cummins Mercruiser QSC 540s. Those engines took Pete and his crew around the world in just 60 days, setting a new speed record for circumnavigation in a powerboat. And it was done with engines running on biodiesel. You may think only specially built vessels like Earthrace can run on this fat and vegetable oil fuel. But since March of 2007, Cummins Mercruiser has approved the use of B20 biodiesel for its entire engine lineup. So what is B20? Well, it's a blend of 20% biodiesel and 80% petroleum. As blends of biodiesel get stronger, the number will get higher, such as B30 and B40, and on and on until engines like Pete's can run on pure biodiesel. Currently, Cummins is the only manufacturer offering engines that can utilize B20. Promoters of this veggie blend fuel hope others will soon catch on. B20 can be made from 350 different products, including coconut, sunflower seeds, animal fat. In fact, even Pete, as thin as he is, had liposuction to prove that fuel can be made from so many other different sources than fossil fuel. He literally put the fat of his own back into the tank and the engine ran. Pete raced around the world to draw attention to the race to sustain the planet, in which he believes biodiesel is a critical component. He's taken his ship and his crew on a world tour to spread the message. For more information, including details on how Cummins is leading the way in the conversion to biodiesel, read my entire engine room article in the October issue of Southern Boating Magazine, or register for our virtual magazine at www.southernboating.com. Captain Stacy, back to you. Thanks, Rob. Next in Did You Know, the Navy's newest sailor is a robot. Earlier this month, the Navy showed off its latest enemy hunting craft in San Diego Bay. It's an unmanned boat designed to detect hostile submarines, especially in shallow waters. These robo-boats are called unmanned surface vehicles and they're remotely controlled by sailors on warships at a safe distance from the action. Each USV is equipped with high-tech electronics, sonar, and photographic gear. The first one built, a 39-footer capable of traveling up to 35 knots in rough water, costs nearly $200 million. Future USVs are expected to cost a mere $46 million per boat. And it's a good thing the price is expected to drop because the Navy plans to have 32 unmanned boats to help them detect rogue subs. If all goes well with sea trials, the first deployments, probably to the Persian Gulf, will happen in 2011. Next we'll see what's making waves in nautical news. On October 17th, the long-awaited movie, Morning Light, will finally hit the theaters. Morning Light is a Disney documentary that followed a group of young sailors as they trained for and competed in the 44th Trans-Pacific Yacht Race. The movie highlights the youthful crew's journey from recruitment to the end of the race. Fifteen sailors were chosen from more than 500 applicants. The lucky ones picked endured six months of strenuous training before their 2,300-mile voyage aboard a high-performance 52-foot sloop. 
As you can imagine, they formed an unbreakable bond along the way, making for one inspiring story. The movie was conceived and produced by Roy Disney, who happens to hold the Los Angeles to Honolulu monohull sailing speed record. Advanced showings of Morning Light have already sparked rave reviews from many in the sailing community. For more information and to watch the entire trailer, go to www.disney.com forward slash Morning Light. And now it's time to announce this week's poll. Here we go. Since biofuel is so new to the recreational boating world, I'm wondering, would you be afraid to put B20 in your boat's tank even if the engine manufacturer said it was okay? Yes, I wouldn't do it. No, I'm sure it's fine. A little, you try it first. To vote, simply go to www.theboaters.com. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is, Proof all women harp all the time. Submitted by David. What? <laughs> and that'll do it for this episode of The Boaters TV. See you back here on Wednesday.